So, I haven't been in the mood lately, but I saw this video and I didn't have locks growing up, but like I really identified with some of the things this girl said in this video. The sixth grader at the private Emmanuel Christian School in Springfield, Virginia, the place where second lady Karen Pence teaches. Amari tells WUSA 9 she's been bullied for weeks. Sometimes I think that I, like, I don't deserve to uh, like be there at a Christian school and everything and that I'm ugly. She says three sixth grade boys won't let up, taking her school lunches, calling her names, and more recently, an attack on the school playground. Like all three were around me, and then one of them put my hands behind my back, one of them covered my mouth. All while she says a third student pulled out scissors, then cut her hair, her lengthy dreadlocks now hanging unevenly. Like took like big chunks of my hair and just cut. What kind of names were they calling you? Ugly. Uh, I shouldn't have been born. Amari's grandmother wonders where the teachers and other students were when this happened. I, I, I want to see them um, um, dismissed from the school. Amari's grandfather, Dwayne Allen, said the ambush hurt him. My heart just broke, he said. I was just paralyzed. I couldn't get myself together. Though Karen Pence works at the school, the Allen said they did not see any connection between her and the attack. So this is the same school that the vice president wife works at wait a minute y'all wait a minute wait a minute when i started reading this i did not know that holy shit no wonder the ancestors see <laughs> y'all think I, I yo this this is not why i read this i had no idea though karen pence works at the school the allen said they did not see any connection between her and the attack are you kidding me? Head of the school, Stephen Danish said administrators, administrators were deeply disturbed by the allegations. I'm just shocked right now. Hold on. I'm sorry. We take seriously the emotional and physical well-being of all of our students and have a zero to tolerance policy of any kind of bullying or abuse, he said in a statement. Danish said they asked the police to conduct a thorough investigation. Amari, a straight A student and a violin player said that the boys started bullying her at the beginning of the school year. On Monday, she was at recess about to go down a slide when the boys grabbed her, put a hand over her mouth, and another boy grabbed her arms. A third boy cut off some of her hair. The bell, the bell rang as the boys ran off laughing. Scared, Amari told no one. On Wednesday, her grandmother was doing her hair when she noticed long portions of it missing. The girl started crying and told the whole story. The family called the Fairfax County Police who took a report of the incident. I'm sure they're going to go after them with all the vigor they would if they were black. Emmanuel Christian School is an evangelical private school that explicitly bars its employees from engaging or condoning homosexual or lesbian sexual activity. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? In January, Karen Penn started teaching art there two days a week after previously working at the school for 12 years. The office at the school lady did not immediately respond to an inquiry about the incident this week. Anyway. Okay, so this is... That was crazy. I, I had no idea, but that, that's really interesting. Um, that the vice president's uh, wife works at a school where the kids are cutting off black girls' locks. What I thought was interesting and what made me want to do this video is because one, she wasn't physically harmed, so it's a little bit easier for me to talk about this, but the psychological damage that your daughters are going through when you're sending them to schools where the population does not look like them. Now, I can't, I can't speak for boys because I'm not a boy, but I can speak for a girl, okay? One of the things that she said is that they make her feel ugly. See, when you're a little black girl and you get put in an environment where the standard of beauty doesn't look anything like you and every boy around you shuns you, especially the ones, even the ones that look like you shun you it does something to your psyche now see for me i knew that what i was experiencing was abnormal 
because I grew up in Brooklyn and I grew up fighting boys off. You understand what I'm saying? I grew up like literally, <laughs> if you grew up in Brooklyn in the 90s, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You literally would fight boys, you know, every day, like in the staircase and stuff. Like nothing, like you need to call parents over you, nothing you call major bruises over, but it was, you know, the boys would slap your legs when you wear a skirt and you know what I mean? So it was like, I went from that environment to an environment where I was completely ignored. So to me, I knew that was foreign, but for, for other girls that grew up in that environment, I saw how it fucked with them. It fucked with how they saw themselves in the fucking mirror. Are you hearing me? So yeah, they all got A's in school, but when they looked in the mirror, they didn't see what I saw. And you can't, do you know how hard it's going to be? There's a there's a, a saying that it's easier, I think it was a Frederick Douglass who said it, it's easier to fix a child than it is to fix a broken man. And I'm going to say that for all black people, it's easier to fix a child than it is to fix a broken adult. You send in your kids to this school for them to make your child feel like, I don't deserve to be there. I feel ugly. Those were her exact words. And the grandmother, all she wants is for those kids to be dismissed from the school. Why? So the next set of three kids can step up and do it to her again next week? I mean, for God's sakes, the vice president's wife works at the school. Is that not clue enough? So... I want you to get into the mind of a preteen girl in an, in an all white school and maybe maybe two or three or four boys. You know what I mean? Black kids or black boys there, you know, it's a handful, you know, so it's not that many black kids in the school. Now, the few black boys that are there, they're friends with the boys that are, you know, of other races sometimes. And, you know, boys tend to like what their friends like, at least when they're younger. Um, they're very heavily influenced um, by their friends on which girls they publicly want to like. And if your friends are other races and they like women of other races because you're too dark your lips are too big you know um, your hair is too nappy or your hair is not long enough you understand what I'm saying then now not only do the boys of other races don't want you but then the boys that look like you don't want you either now you already live in an area where it's hard to get black hair care products there aren't that many black salons, if there are any. You got to order everything online. So, and things may be a little bit different now, you know what I mean, with like the way the internet is and stuff like that. But, man, when I lived in these places, a lot of them, like their hair care was years behind. So you're growing up in an environment where the, the black boys don't want you the boys of other races don't really want you either. You don't, you can't, you don't have access to great hair care. <laughs> and so you grow up hating what you see in the mirror. You grow up wanting to be what the boys like. Now, you can grow up and get a great education and everything and you make it through. You, you become an adult. But that shit is still in your brain. About how you look. About how you feel. About what boys want. Now, for me, as I got older, living in those spaces, what was interesting was the flip. Because all of a sudden, the boys of the other races then wanted me, but the black boys still didn't. <laughs> and that's why I came back to Brooklyn, because I recognize how abnormal like I said before that that is but when you grow up in that from cradle 
to adulthood or even adolescence, your mind is already formulated. It's already shaped to feel a way about yourself. I, I, I want you guys to get that. And then imagine how you feel when then the only one that wants you out the blue is the boy of other races. Now, see, like I said, I came from somewhere else. So I didn't want that. I knew that I needed to come back to New York where things were normal. But imagine now you've been shunned all your life. And the only person that looks at you is a boy from another race. And don't do this to your daughters. Some parents may say, well, my daughter doesn't need to be interested in boys anyway. I'm telling you, these are the experiences that are going to shape your child's brain. Now, whether you allow them to talk to the boys or not is one thing, but being shunned is a whole nother. Are y'all understanding what I'm trying to say? Now, this is what I experienced. Part of the reason why I use this picture for this voiceover right here, other than the fact that I didn't feel like getting on camera, was this is what I experienced. Look at my picture. Okay. This is what I experienced. Little girls, this is what I experience. So just because they're shunning you doesn't mean that you're not beautiful. That's abnormal, honey. That's abnormal. I'm sorry your parents have you at that school where they treat you like that. But understand, boo boo, that's abnormal. You are beautiful. And to that specific little girl, your locks are beautiful. You are a beautiful young lady. You are going to grow up and turn heads. I'm sorry that those boys can't see or trying to ignore what they see. Don't internalize that. Try not to internalize that. And I'm going to keep working on your parents.